Cozy Manor Knits podcast. This is episode 15. My name is Sophie and I am coming to you from Shediac River, New Brunswick, Canada, uh, where I live with my husband and two kids. And this is my knitting podcast where I share all my recent makes, my current whips, and all of my dream knitting, which I want to knit everything, <laughs> all the things. Um, welcome to all new viewers. Thank you so much for stopping by and uh, thank you so much for coming back. For those of you who are, hi, it's so wonderful to be here with you. Um, so yeah, uh, you can find me on Instagram and uh, Ravelry as Cozy Meadow Knits, as well as I have an email address everything where you can find me and all of the patterns and all of the yarn dyers or whatever I talk about in this podcast will be listed down in the show notes for you. Um, okay, so uh, let's get started. I hope you have a cozy beverage. Um, I'm having some coffee in my wonderful, I don't know if you can read that, there's a glare, but it says Sweather Weather uh, Cup from my sister that I got last year for Christmas. And yes, Christmas has come into my house. <laughs> um, I go a little bit crazy on Christmas and fall decorations. So fall is over, now it's all about Christmas. And um, yeah, so hopefully you guys are okay with the scenery. Um, okay, knitting talk, right? Uh, it's been a while. I have been very busy. I have been, I've been very busy knitting and I have been very busy life, but all good. Um, so I can start with what I am wearing. Let me take a drink. Before my coffee gets cold. Yes. So this is my first finished object. It is my cat number one by Pia Trans. Um, this is supposed to be a t-shirt and I made it long sleeve. So I will stand up and show it off. I absolutely adore how it came out. I love the fit. I'm trying not to make too much noise with my chair. And this is it. It's lovely. I love I just love it. I've worn it. It might be a little bit um, creased up because I have already worn it a few times and I love the fit. I love the yoke detail. I love the neckline. So uh, I love the little textured stitches. It's just, I just love it. I can't it's one of my favorites that I've made so far. Yes. So it's done. If you have seen my previous episode, I had knit the body and I had noticed um, some color, not color pooling, but some stripes, some different colors going on, different shades or I don't know. Anyways, you could really tell that there were some places it was lighter and some spots it was darker and it was doing the stripes. So I hadn't noticed it when I was knitting up, when I was knitting it up, but I didn't notice after and it was really bugging me. And what it was is um, the yarn that I used, uh, it's in my project notes, it is called Jody Long Alba and it's... I think it's um, alpaca and wool mix. And um, what happened, I had three balls of this. This is DK weight yarn. Um, and in the two of the balls that I had used, the yarn was cut in the middle of the ball and it was reattached with a knot. And so I didn't really pay attention to that. I was like, okay, that's okay. And I would just like continue on knitting. And once I knit the body and I put it, in my on my bed before trying it on I immediately saw the color blocking and I was like oh I was so discouraged but I was really bummed out <laughs> I was really bummed out not because it was too much knitting it was just I really I was so excited it was almost done I only had the sleeves left to do and I was really 
anxious to have it finished and I, I lived with it for a couple days. I kept looking at it and I knew in my heart I just needed to rip back because that was for me. I am someone who will definitely fudge mistakes. I'm totally okay with that. But for this, for me, it was bothering me because the stripe was right at the bust. To me, it was very visible. So um, I ripped back. I ripped back like two days after. Um, and then I just started knitting again. It is, I ripped back uh, just before the sleeve separation. So really the whole body. <laughs> Um, but it knits up so fast, it's stuck in that stitch and, um, you know, I knit during hockey games, my son plays hockey and, um, I'm just on cruise control and I just knit, knit, knit. So it was really good. Um, and then I did the sleeves and this is it. So I love, love the fit, love the neckline. Um, I, I even still love the yarn. I'm totally fine with the yarn. I love the tweed in the yarn. I don't know if you can see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, yeah. And the tweed parts are not sticking out a lot. And I am someone who loves tweed, but I would go and pick out. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. But I would pick out the little tweed parts because they're sticking out or anyway. But these, I find these little tweed bits, they're really embedded in the yarn. So like, I don't, I don't even think about it. I don't, I don't see it. And anyway, Anyway, it's, it's lovely. Two things, two modifications I made to this um, pattern. Um, the pattern is a paid for pattern. It is wonderfully um, written up. I highly recommend it. I don't recommend it as a first sweater, I would say. But it's definitely, if you have like a few sweaters under, you know, your belt and you're, or you're a very confident knitter, go right ahead. There's nothing complicated really in it. It's just, I find it's a tiny bit advanced for like your first sweater. Um, but yeah, it's a wonderful pattern. Um, the things that I did differently. Uh, in the pattern, there is some embroidery little stitches that would be here um, and that you do that after you have knit the whole sweater and I have not done that because I am lazy <laughs> um, yeah so and that's okay I think it would be pretty with but I am very pleased with without it so I know that in the future if I really want it um, I can go in and do those little parts um, so I did not do that. The other um, modification is not intentional. It's something that, yeah, it wasn't intentional. I did not read through the pattern. You would think that I would learn my lesson. I would have learned my lesson. And um, it's really important to read through the pattern. Read through the pattern <laughs> before. Um, so I was so excited. I did the yoke. I was so excited. I separated for the sleeves and then I did not look at the pattern really. And I just knit the body and I knit, knit, knit and around, no decreases, no whatever. I just knit straight because that's what I usually do on all of my sweaters. So I did that. And once I got to the, um, ribbing on the bottom, I thought, well, I'm going to check the pattern to make sure that I'm doing it right. So I checked the pattern and I saw like a whole section above the ribbing that I was like, it's talking about short rows. I didn't do those. It was a whole blurb. So in the pattern, it has you doing short rows after you've separated for the sleeves. I think it's after. And um, yeah, not going to give more away. But the reason why um, it's like that, because if you look at the pictures on the pattern uh, page in Ravelry, the on the back, it's kind of scooped. It's just it kind of does like a scoop hem. So it kind of covers the bum maybe area more. If I would have read the pattern, I would have done that. Um, I think it's brilliant. And um, 
that's totally fine. Um, I, I think it looks really great. I saw the pictures after and I'm like, oh, but I'm totally fine with how it turned out. It's it's the perfect length for me. I just knit until I was comfortable with the length. I didn't follow the length um, in the pattern. And that's it. That's the other thing that, oops, I didn't do because, oops, I didn't read through the pattern. <laughs> oh, well, it worked out well. Um, the sleeves as well, I think I did a little bit of the decrease. Well, yeah, so the sleeves, the pattern is actually for a um short sleeved uh, t-shirt and I made it long sleeved. So I just did a couple of decreases and then just did the same one by one rib um, as on the hem of the sweater. So that's my cat number one sweater. I love it so much. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to say, so just one last thing. So I was seeing the color blocking on the sweater and I ripped back and when I re-knit the body which I forgot to say what I did was I alternated skeins so I would knit a row with one ball and then I would rip, knit another row with the second ball and I did helical knitting I had not I never done that before and I did it and it's so easy and it's perfect so that was really cool too um, and it worked out perfectly um, there was no pooling, there was no like color blocking or whatever. So it worked out really well. And that's the story about the cat number one. Um, okay, so I have two other half finished objects. Uh, they are socks. So the first sock that I did, this is a test knit um, from Nancy Wheeler. She is Knit Sip happy on Instagram and she has a YouTube uh, channel and she has podcasts too so go and check her out um, she is super funny and super nice and super talented um, I test a lot of her sock patterns because I can't say no <laughs> because I can't say no and because I always love them so this is a sock that I have tested for Nancy it is not released yet, but it will be um, soon either. I think it's going to be released next week. Um, yeah, and she said it was okay for me to show it. So this is called the Slip Tastic Socks. And I only made one, but I'm, I already cast on the second one. And so this is it. It is a, it's a DK weight sock pattern. So this is why I said yes to the test knit because um, I want more DK weight socks on my needles. I want them on my feet um, and there are quick knits. So when I saw the pattern at first, I was going to say no because I have so many gifts knit, gift knits that I want to make and I haven't started and I know that's ridiculous, but, um, but I saw the pattern and I was like, okay, yes, yes, I want to. I really do and it's oh my god it's so delicious it's so delicious so I used what did I use for this okay so it is a DK weight sock pattern um, I did not have any DK weight yarn that I wanted to use for it. I have one skein of DK weight and it's going to be a hat so I Nancy said that I could use fingering weight held double. So this is the main color is delicious. It's so nice. I love all the little different colors that are in it. It is from Ravenswood Fiber Co. And it's called Raven. That's the colorway. Um, so I held it double throughout the sock. Um, in the pattern, it has this lovely, lovely texture on the front of the foot and all around the leg. And then for the color work, I used, well that, yeah, this one's better. So for the color work, I used some Leo and Roxy basic basics. 
uh, it is the color Raspberry Ripple and this was in my stash from a from my column tea that I made so I have tons of this left and it was perfect the color combination I just really loved it and uh, yeah I was happy to be able to use some yarn from my stash and these rip this Ravenwood um, Raven's wood was from I purchased a sock box um, yarn surprise box from La Violette Yarn Gift and Co. So this was one of the skeins that was in it. So I'm so happy I was able to use it. And so yeah, so that's the sock. It is the most squishiest texture. Oh, I had. I had it at work yesterday, so I finished it. I weaved in my ends yesterday at lunchtime, and then I just had the sock on my foot. <laughs> I only have one sock, and I just like, I, I tried it on, and I'm like, oh, it's so delicious. It's so squishy. Perfect, perfect for house socks. Oh, it's going to be so good. So I'm going to make the other sock and have the pair, and then... I'm going to knit the sock again and I'm going to make it shorter and just have like kind of like this maybe well kind of like that for like I want to make a ton of these for the house because oh it's so warm and squishy so highly recommend this pattern it was really fun not hard to do um knits pearls a little bit of color work um I did size large and um i think the needle sizes are 3.25 millimeter so i did them on dpns you can do it on magic loop if you want or the nine inch circulars but i did it on dpns and that's my first half object so i will share when that pattern is out i will definitely share it and um nancy will be we'll, we'll all be blasting this a pattern because it's just really awesome so thank you Nancy for letting me test for you again and okay so that was that this is another sock but a different one it is the oh my goodness I forget where are my notes one sec They are called, what are they called? They are called the Maritime Wool Socks. And they are by Simone, I forget her name. Okay, Simone Van Eiderstein. I think I said that right. I will put her name down below. She is also known as Sand and Sky on uh, Ravelry as well and on Instagram. So this is a free pattern for a sock and it is wonderful um this pa this sock is going to be for my husband which is in the house somewhere he doesn't know about it um this is the first thing that i've knit for him i know right i'm so mean um but i have this is not my first attempt though i have tried to knit him some slippers and he loves his knitted slipper. He has some from his grandmother, but they're like falling apart. And so he wants some more. I tried that. I tried like twice or three times and it was like, it was ridiculous. I, I, I have no idea what I'm doing. And that was also when I had no idea what I was doing, but I still, oh, anyway. So when I saw this pattern, it's on Ravelry. It's a free pattern. Um, I had picked up this yarn, which is Briggs and Little Tuffy yarn. I picked this up at uh, at Value Village, which is a thrift store. There was two skeins; they were full. They were like still in the skein. Um, so yeah, it is uh, Briggs and Little Tuffy. So it's a, like a worsted weight yarn. It's very very rustic which he want, he's been wanting some uh, socks for when he goes out um, on the four-wheeler or um, snow blowing the driveway when it's really cold. 
So I saw the pattern and I was like, yes, I'll try it again. Uh, it is, I think it's a two, I don't remember. I don't remember if it's a uh, knit three pearl one rib, maybe, or knit two pearl one. I don't remember. But anyways, I'm not giving anything away because it's a free pattern. Check it out. I will have it linked down below. Um, it's a really quick knit and I just need to cast on the second one. And this is going to be a Christmas gift. So I still have this one to do too. <laughs> um, super great pattern written like it's very well written and um it's very simple i highly recommend it i did it on dpns i don't remember the size but i do have everything listed on my project page and yeah so i'm excited to have this i'm excited to wrap them up and be able to gift them i have no idea if they're going to fit but what i did how I did that, I didn't know how long to knit them. So I tried on, <laughs> I tried on his shoe. I tried on one of his shoe, like his sneaker. And then I kind of like measured where my foot would end and how much more sneaker there was. And then I kind of like gauged it on that. So I think it's gonna fit. I'm pretty sure it's gonna fit. Anyway, so this is Charles's slipper socks or like boot socks for Christmas. I love them. I just need to make the other one. <laughs> so many things to knit. Oh, anyway. So yeah, so that's my other uh, half finished object. And the designer for that pattern also has a podcast and she podcasts with Troy and um, the podcast name is Worsted Fiber Podcast. And they just sit and just talk and knit at the same time. So it's really cool. Go check it out. Oh, my God. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you can go check it out. I will have that podcast and Nancy's podcast. And I'm going to mention a few other ones. And I will have them listed down below in the notes. Yes. Okay. That's that. I'm hoping this. Okay. Where am I at? Okay. 22 minutes. Okay. My last podcast, I said it was going to be really short. And it was the longest one. <laughs> I totally lied. So I'm trying. I don't want to rush through it, but I don't want to babble too much. But I have so much to show. Uh, okay, so those finished objects, half finished object. I have two things that I am currently working on. I did cast on the second sock for Nancy, but I really only did the cuff. So I'm not going to show that. Uh, I did cast on uh, the Renunculus by Midori Hirose, and I will have her name down here, and I will link the pattern down below. And this is my Renunculus. I hope it fits. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm going to show the Renunculus. This is my first one ever. I was really excited to start it and I have done all of the texture. I am now at the section where I would do the raglan increases. So I really love it. I love the color. The yarn that I'm using is, I'm using Briggs and Little Roving. I don't remember, I think the color is light gray. Um, Again, everything is in my project page, even that color. Um, so I am holding a strand of roving uh, by Briggs and & Little, and I am holding it with a strand of mohair that I have right here. It's the Tin Silk Mohair. And uh, the color is numbers. The color is 9071. And it's kind of like a, a green gray tint to it. So I thought it was perfect with the roving. And this, I'm making this, this is the first time that I'm using uh, unspun yarn. And it's really lovely. It's super nice to work with when I'm holding it. It's kind of like 
this is how I hold it. It has the two strands and it's just so soft. It's just, it really is soft to the touch. Um, my concern, <laughs> my concern for this is that I did not need gauge. I know. I don't know if it's going to work out, but I'm going to try to make it work. I did not need gauge. I am using um, a needle size that is smaller um, than the recommended one because I didn't want it to be uh, see-through. I don't want to wear anything underneath, like an undergarment. Well, I'm going to wear a bra, but that's it. <laughs> um, and... So I didn't want the material to be see-through too much, like to be. So that's why I went down a little bit and I thought, you know, like it'll work out. I don't know why, but it would. Uh, I think it will. Um, the neck, I did the large neckline and it's not large at all. So I must be doing something wrong or well, that and the fact that I'm using not the correct needle size, which is totally my fault. Like, I know, I should know better, right? I really should. But, so when I tried it on last night, just the neck, like it's, it's not choking me or anything, but it's really like, it's just like really like that. Like, not tight, but really here. And I kind of like it, like not low, but you know, like a little bit of breathing room here. So what I'm going to do before uh, before continuing on, I'm going to block this. I'm going to block it and I'm going to stretch just the neckline here and see, get it dry and then try it on. If I am okay with it, then I'm going to continue on with the raglan increases for my, the size that I want. If not, I'll rip back and I'll start over. I'm used to it. <laughs> And it's totally my fault, not the pattern's fault at all, at all. It's a one, like it's, I was really scared about the pattern because it's a pattern where you can use all different sizes of yarn and it's just, to me that was just really overwhelming because I thought, you know, tell me the needles, the yarn, everything that I'm supposed to use and I just, I don't know, I was like really scared to be confused or something but it's really well written um, there's YouTube tutorials YouTube videos on how to do some of the texture and I really love how this yarn and um, the texture is just showing off in it so it's a really pretty pattern I'm excited about it I just need to stretch this neckline and see how but I think it's going to be I think it's going to be okay I think it's going to be okay Hopefully, you'll see more on the next episode. So that's one of my current whips. Um, the other one I can show, it's just here under my pile of yarn. Okay. It is my Orbitz and oh, I love it so much. I would have um, done more on it but um, I had the test knits and I had other things to do and really I should be doing the gift knits as well. So, but I did do one of the sleeves and I'm just at almost the cuff for the sleeve. <clears throat> I don't know why my voice is all crackly. So this is what I can show. Um, you've got, you guys have seen it before. If you've seen my previous episodes, it's my orbits. I love it so much so much and i'm really excited to have it finished and be able to wear it so that's why i'm trying to go at it as much as i can to get it to done uh starting the sleeve again from here uh it's it took a little bit of brain power uh because it it has you continue on the color work and for some reason, I just couldn't wrap my brain around it. But once I did figure it out, I was like, oh, that's what, it, not that's what it means, but I don't know. My brain understood after like reading it like 15 times and it was clear. It's clearly written. It's just my brain. I don't know. I don't know. But 
so happy about it. So that's the other uh, whip I have. It is the Orbits. It is by Un... Oh my. I'm going to write it here. I think it's Unwind Knitwear. Uh, I'll have her link down below. Uh, the yarn that I'm using uh, for the color work is Leo and Roxy. Uh, color is in my project page. I think it's called Omen. I think. It's beautiful. Um, and the main color is Cascade Refine. And it's in the color Doe. I think. Doe Skin. I think. So, I love it. That's the other whip that I'm currently working on. I want to cast on everything. So, um, yeah, what can I talk about? I'll share, I'll share a bit really quickly what I want to cast on in the future. I have two things. So I went to the yarn shop two weeks, not last week. Was it last weekend? I don't remember. But it was lately, and um, it was um, my local yarn shop's birthday, which she will be linked down below, La Violette Yarn Gift & Co. Um, I'm always there. <laughs> anyway, she was having a birthday sale, and of course I had to go. And so I bought a sweater's quantity of this. And this is called sky and it's by drops it's a dk weight yarn it is so soft it's like cloud and that's why it's called sky i think it's just super you can grab this strand it is the softest the softest oh it's so soft and squishy um i was watching i was watching sandy by the lakeside I love Sandy by the Lakeside. Um, I will have her link down below. She's Canadian. She is in Ontario and she knits, she cooks. She's just, oh, she does um, journaling. Anyways, I just love everything. She makes bags as well. She's a bag maker. Anyway, she is lovely and I love her podcast. And um, her on her last episode, she was talking that, she was saying that she was going to she was talking about her dream knitting and she mentioned um it is called it is called okay it is called the putney sweater and it's by amy loudon and so when i saw it first i saw she showed what it was like what the sweater was and i was like that's really nice and when she said it was by amy loudon um i was like i've knit one of her patterns before and that's my whitmore i have a whitmore sweater uh love it lace detail i adore that sweater um and it was a really well written pattern so when she mentioned this one the putney sweater um I'll show, I keep doing this. I'll show a picture of it. Um, I was like, yes, that looks so comfortable. Um, you can dress it up, you can dress it down. And I have been wanting to try this type of yarn. So it is, it's a chain net yarn, which means it's kind of like a tube with uh, fibers blown into it. Sorry. Um, and the fiber content of this is... Oh, my goodness. Oh, 74% alpaca, 18% polyamide, and 8% wool. And it's baby alpaca. It's lovely. It's delicious. It's so squishy. Anyway, so I got a sweater's quantity of this. So that's going to be on the needles soon. Um, also, on the needles that will be soon is the love note. Um... I've already talked about that. I've shown the yarn before in previous episodes. I already have the yarn. Um, me and Mary from Old Time Knits podcast. I'll have her linked. Um, we're going to do a knit along and it's going to be a New Year's cast on. I'm so, I'm so excited. We're going to cast on on New Year's um, the love note. 
And if anyone wants to participate to that, you don't have to cast on on New Year's Day, but it's, it would be so much fun if you did. Um, we're going to have that. We're going to have a hashtag. We haven't talked, uh, we've talked about it, but we haven't talked about specifics. So we'll create a hashtag um, and we'll have that. You can post on Instagram um, your progress and whatever. And we'll just have some fun knitting up the love note. Uh, so that's one of my future knits as well. Uh, stay tuned. Um, I will definitely uh, put more information once I talk to Mary and we decide all the specifics. Um, and I will sh share that on Instagram as well. Um, the other thing that I want to knit, the other thing, that I want, all of the things that I want to knit, but again, at the at my local yarn shop, the sale again last week. I got some mohair. Okay, so I want to, I want to knit a cowl. I've shared that cowl before and it's by Snickerdoodle Knits. I forget the name, I will link it below here. I will, it will be linked, but I will have the name here and I will have a picture here um, of it. But um, I've already bought the pattern and I want to make it with this. So the pattern calls for DK weight yarn and this is a fingering weight yarn by Yarn Indulgences. <laughs> so, oh it's glowing up but there's so many different colors. It's just gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Um, I don't have the specifics here. I don't have the ball band but once I create the project page I will have all of that information in there. The colors, there's like some teal, there's like dusty rose and some purple and just gold. It's just, oh, it's so delicious. It's so soft. So I'm going to have this and I'm going to hold it double. Oh, so nice. This is a dusty rose. I don't know if you can see the real color, but um, this is Tinsel Mohair again. Um, color is a number. It's 3553. And it's just like a match made in heaven. I had brought the skein with me at the shop and because I knew I wanted to cast the, the cowl soon because I want the cowl for um, going to the arena uh, when it gets really, really cold. So I need to get a move on on this project. But so good. So I'm excited about this one too. And that's what I'm going to share for future knits. <laughs> I think that's enough. Um, there's like a hundred more patterns that I want to do and that I've bought patterns for already, but I will share that in the future. Um, acquisitions. I have a few that I want to talk about. And I'll just have this really fast. Um, this is Revolu uh, Revolution Yarn. So this is yarn dyed by Melanie. Um, she's in Ontario. Yes, she's in Ontario, I think, pretty sure. Um, I know she's in Canada for sure. I think she's in Ontario. Um, okay. I follow her on Instagram and of course she was having, uh, free shipping. Um, in October, I think with Canada post, you can do free shipping on a Tuesday, something like that. And she had posted on Instagram that that day the shipping was free. And so I jumped on it. I had been like, checking out her yarns for a long time and this was just the push to dive into it it's so nice okay so the first one is this is a dk weight yarn um it's hand dyed it is super wash merino 100 percent the uh color is called roger that and this is going to be a hat so i had been looking for some yarn for a hat i think it's going to be for my for Christmas. Am I going to have time to do this? I have no idea. 
But if not, I have someone else in mind for this, but this will be a hat at some point, <laughs> hopefully by Christmas. And um, super squishy. The color is super nice. It's got specks and it's kind of like a gray with like brown tones, beige, just lovely. Can't wait to knit with this one. And then, of course, I had to get something for myself. And this is a sock set. She had a couple of different ones. They're so fun. Um, this one is I Feel Good in Sweats. Sweatpants. I feel good in sweatpants. Duh. I'm in sweatpants all the time. Um, at home. I can't wear those at work, but whatever. Um, so this is 20% nylon, 80% uh, merino super wash it's a fingering weight um yeah it's 100 grams and a 25 gram mini uh 370 yards yeah so it's going to be a wonderful wonderful socks i think i'm gonna make socks with it pretty sure but i was really happy to add this to my collection thank you so much melanie and uh yeah so I will have her link down below. Go check her out. She has some really, really nice colors. Uh, yes. The other thing I did not purchase, I won a giveaway. It's so fun. I love Instagram. Um, so I won a giveaway. Uh, it's from Lacey. And uh, she's so kind. She's so awesome. So Lacey is from Mermaid Tangle Yarn Co. Yes, Yarn Co. And so she had a giveaway and uh, on Instagram. So I entered in and I won and I'm so happy. It's so amazing. So the prize was one of her skeins and it's called, the colorway is called Mermaid Tangles. And it has all of these beautiful, and it's so deep this beautiful teal color um or aqua teal i think so um beautiful purple dark really dark purple in here the color is super saturated and it's lovely lovely uh and the yarn is super soft um it is a 75 percent uh super wash merino and 25 percent nylon um this is 462 yards for 100 grams so that's a lot of yard extra. So I'm so happy. And then she put it, she put in a little stitch marker, which is a lollipop. Thank you so much, Lacey. It's oh, oh I love this fiber community. Everybody is so nice. And she made this adorable project bag. And I love it so much. I'm definitely going to put one of my projects in here for Christmas. I love it with a little sparkle cord here so again thank you so much Lacey I love it so much now okay so that's pretty much no I have one more thing okay 44 minutes all right let's go one more thing that I wanted to mention was um gift knitting and a gift knit idea I made this cowl and it's a free pattern and I made this I think it was like two years ago and I absolutely love it and I thought I would share it because it's a free pattern and if you're looking for um, a, you know a quick gift knit pattern um, this one was awesome and I love it and I wear it all the time it is called <laughs> I'm very professional here it is called the spikelet spikelet cow by victoria brogan broger i'm not sure i will have her i can't even read my own handwriting um i'll have her link down below and i'll have my project page link as well so this is really a fun cow i used estelle worsted yarn for this so it's super um, affordable yarn um, it held up beautifully. I think I should wash this. So I'm going to wash it and block it. Um, because yeah, it wouldn't kind of like spruce it up a little, but it kept its shape. 
Um, it hasn't, there's no pilling. Um, it, there really isn't any pilling. And I use this a lot. So I can try it on. <laughs> if I can. Okay. I'm really hot. Come, il fait vraiment chaud ici. Super hot. But I, I really felt like I had to show it off just because, again, it's free. It's made with really affordable yarn. And I just, I love it so much. I wear it at the hockey games. Um, so if you can see, I don't really remember if I, if I made modifications to it. I think probably not. Um, and it stands up like it doesn't. I don't know if it's because of the yarn. I haven't blocked. I, I think I blocked it. I think I did at the, at the beginning. Um, but yeah, it just it holds up and um, it's warm. And then I put my jacket over and it's just it's really nice because there are some cowls. I'm always scared about cowls, too, that kind of like flop down and they're really nice. But then like depending on what you where, where you want to wear it and whatever, I want something that's going to be like warm. And so for me, it stays up anyway. So, and it's really pretty. The cables are not hard to do. Don't be scared of cables. They're super easy to, ooh, sorry, I have fibers everywhere. Um, yeah, super easy to do. Um, they are not complicated at all. If I'm able to do this, you can too. Um, so yeah, so this was, um, something that I wanted to share because it's a really great looking gift and it's super, it's super nice. I wear it all the time. So I wanted to mention that too. And that is all for the knitting. I did a, I did a, uh, giveaway on a, it was in the summer. I did a giveaway, uh couple episodes back and the winner did not contact me so what I'm gonna do I did not do it yet but it was a giveaway for this little pouch that I made it's not perfect it's a zipper pouch it's functional it's functional I have I made myself a couple and um, I I use them all the time so they're really nice to put in your notions and then you know chuck it in a project bag and I have a, I have a couple because I have a lot of project bags. And so, yeah, so I had made this, um, I had done, um, the draw for it and the winner did not contact me back. So, uh, I'm going to redraw for this and it was for that pouch. And I don't think I can show them off really too much, but I made a few stitch markers and progress keepers. Oh, my camera sucks. Sorry. But anyway, I have a few. I have more here. Like that. Anyway, so there's a couple in there in the pouch. I'm going to redraw for that. And I'm going to attach the video. I haven't done it yet. I wanted to show it. And um, I will attach a video at the end of this video. And uh, announcing a winner for this. So I'm going to draw from the comments that were from that episode. And so good luck and I hope, I hope there's a winner. Um, so there, and I wanted to do another giveaway because it's been a year. Oh my goodness. What is this? It's been a year. Oh, my hair is all cracked. Um, that's going to bother, it's going to bother me. Was it like that the whole time? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. I'm just going to do this. Um, yes, it's been a year. This podcast has been going on for a year. Uh, the anniversary was at the end of October. So, um, I'm just so happy that I've met so many wonderful knitters. Uh, I love, I always love reading through the comments. I always try to reply. Um, sometimes they do take a while because I want to sit down and actually reply to the comment. And so I always read them quick and then I try to take time to, um, write the, to write a reply. Um, 
I've met so many wonderful makers, knitters. I've connected with a lot of them um, on Instagram too. Anyways, I just absolutely love this community. I love this craft. I love the yarn and I just wanted to share my love of yarn with someone. So if you want to participate to this, with the, this new giveaway, uh, you can comment down below and I will um, pick a winner, random picker, comment generator um, will be picked. Now, when I do that, I'm, I don't think I'm going to reply. I'm going to heart all of the comments. I'm going to decide if I'm going to reply or not. If, because if I reply, the, that reply will go in the comment picker. So I think so. Anyway, I think that's how it works. So I might not comment right away. Uh, but I will heart all of them and I read them and I love them. So you can comment whatever you want. <laughs> you can comment on what gift, if you're doing any gift knits and if you're not, that's totally okay. Cause I might not get to it either. Like, I think I'm going to finish one of them. I have no idea if I'm going to finish the others. Um, but if you are making something or what are you currently knitting on or just where are you from? Where are you watching from? I love, I love hearing where everybody is watching from. The prize will be this beautiful skein from Sassy String. Sassy Strings, yes. Sassy Strings and um, Yarn Studio. And this is dyed by Tracy. Um, I bought, over the summer, I bought two skeins and she generously uh, gifted this one so generous thank you so much Tracy um, she put in her little note you know that I could do whatever I wanted with it and I would I would love to keep it <laughs> I really do want to keep it but I want to share the love as well and I want to spread um, word on sassy strings as well because she is a, oh, her colors are gorgeous too um, I will have her link down below. Uh, so this is called Te oh, um, Tahitian. Am I saying that right? Tahitian? Te Tahitian Summer. You can laugh if you want. That's totally fine. Uh, it's her sassy sock base. It's super 75% uh, superwash merino, 25% nylon, 463 yards, which is a lot, uh, to 100 grams, and it's a four ply. So it is beautiful. Oh, it's so nice. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So someone will win this and I will make a progress keeper and I'll attach it with this. So there will be one lucky winner. Uh, please comment below if you want to enter. And that's going to be another little giveaway for thank you. Just thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for subscribing. If you did like this video, please like and subscribe. It does help me um, be visible to more people. But if you don't want to, that is okay too. I only do this for fun and I am not sponsored by anyone. So I just felt like I had to say that. Uh, okay, I think, I think. Am I done? I think I'm done. I keep saying that and then there's like, but there's one more thing. This is not yarn related. There is one more thing that I wanted to share and it's a recipe. I haven't shared a recipe in forever. So this recipe is for double chocolate chip cookies. I don't know if I've shared this recipe before. Um, it's been a couple of episodes that I haven't and I keep forgetting about it. Um, and I was at the camper too, so I, I haven't been baking. But ever since coming back to the house, huh, I have been baking a lot. These cookies are so good. Um, the recipe will be linked down below. It's double chocolate. So it's a chocolate cookie with chocolate chips. You could put white chocolate chips if you want. You can mix up some milk chocolate and uh, semi-sweet chocolate chips if you want. I just don't whatever I have on hand and they're always really good. I always double batch them because I put one batch out right away and freeze the other one. 
and um, they freeze beautifully and yeah um, cookies are eaten very very quickly in this house <laughs> and um, so that's why I always have to double batch uh, it's an easy they've always worked out for me and they're super soft I I don't know it's like magic <laughs> so if you do not have a recipe for double chocolate chip cookies you should try this one if you do let me know I hope it works out um, but it always works out for me so and it's perfect for the time of year if you want to make some cookies for Christmas or for the holidays um, yeah so I think that's it I think that's really it yes if you are still here thank you so much for sticking with me um, I wish you the beautiful few weeks I hope I'm back to recording in a couple of weeks to show some more knitting um, for those of you who are in the States uh, happy Thanksgiving that's going to be next week um, be safe for everyone else be safe uh, be cozy healthy kind be kind if you're kind other people will be kind too I hope anyway um, stay cozy happy knitting and I will see you again very soon all right bye hello this is Sophie from the future well actually a few minutes after the future um, I did the draw for the uh, little notions pouch and the winner is I'm gonna put her here the winner is Penelope she is she is a sewist she makes bags I'm almost embarrassed Penelope please don't don't judge too much um, she makes the most awesome bags I've shared her bags before I'll have her link down below um, she makes project bags and um, pouches for needle pouches that I actually have one too. Uh, she is called Yellow, Yellow Petal Made. I think that's it. Um, anyway, she will be linked down below. Congratulations, Penelope. I hope you enjoy your little pouch, imperfect pouch. <laughs> um, thanks again for participating and uh, congratulations. Thank you.